Hello, today we are going to be covering the IXL assignment Evaluate Numerical Expressions Involving Integers. In order for us to evaluate these expressions, we need to use order of operations. So let's first off begin with reviewing what the order of operations is. If you look on the right of the screen, you'll see a nice little anchor chart right here. And oftentimes, when your prior teachers have taught you order of operations, they've used PIMDOS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to help you remember the proper order. So P stands for parentheses, which really means a grouping symbol. So it could actually be parentheses, it could be brackets, it could be a fraction bar, anything that is a grouping symbol always needs to be done first. Second is your exponents or your powers. So exponents, if you look right here, we have a nice little diagram, that's when you have the small superscript up top, a lot of times you square something, and eventually, later on in the year, you'll get to cubing as well, which is when you have it to the power of three. Next is multiplication and division. One of the most important parts about this is even though the M for multiplication comes first, it's not that you do all of the multiplication, then do all the division. Oh, no, no. If you look right here, the arrow is saying you do any multiplication or division from left to right. So the way that you read most books is you read from left to right. So you'll start at the left of the expression and work your way to the right, and you just do the multiplication and division as they come. And same goes for the final step, addition and subtraction. That is also done left to right. So if we look right here at the example that matches it, even though the word add comes first, you do addition and subtraction left to right. So first we would subtract, then lastly we add. All right, even though you have this wonderful example here, let's go ahead and look on the left side where I have the IXL assignment up and let's do some examples live and where you can see us work it out. So we have the expression three plus four, divided by two. I'm going to rewrite that over here to ensure we have plenty of room. As I go through the order of operations, I'm going to check off the steps. And this is something that eventually you should be able to do mentally. But if you're somebody that likes to write a lot, like me, you can make a physical little checklist every time if you need to. All right, first step is to look for parentheses or any grouping symbols. Nope, I don't see any, so I can mark that off. Next is any exponents. Remember an exponent looks like this, and I don't see any exponents, so I can skip that step too. Next is any multiplication or division left to right that I have. So our very, very first step is going to be to divide. Four divided by two is two. And everything else that we didn't use, we need to bring it down with. So that way we have our work all in a nice organized line and we don't accidentally get confused. And the fourth step is any addition or subtraction. And yep, I have some addition and subtraction, three plus two, which is five. And we have evaluated that because we now have one single answer. And it's correct. All right, let's try another example, but this time we are gonna jump up. Ooh, actually, no, we're gonna go ahead and do this one. There's a negative. So this already is jumping up a level. Once again, I'm gonna write it out and I encourage you guys to all do that as well, whether you are using a tablet like or some sort of device or whether you physically have paper, make sure you write it out because by writing out the steps step by step, you won't get it all jumbled and mixed up when you try to do it in your head. And then times four, I'm gonna use a dot because I don't like using X's for multiplication anymore. 
Okay, very first step is parentheses. Do we have any grouping symbols? I don't see any parentheses, no brackets, no fraction bars. So we can skip that one again. All right, next is exponents. I don't see any exponents. There's no little subscripts of a two or a three. So that step is done. Next would be multiplication or division. And remember that's left to right. And I do have some multiplication. Now, what am I multiplying? I hope what you said or what you're thinking is that you're multiplying a negative one by four. Because it's three plus negative one, which means we need to multiply with negatives. When you're multiplying, remember that if your two numbers, if their signs are the same, so they're both positive or they're both negative, then your answer will be positive. When you're multiplying, if they have opposite signs, like I do here, one number is negative and one number is positive, then your answer will be negative. So that helps you multiply the numbers first, then figure out the sign. So one times four is four, but since it's a negative one, our answer will be negative four. And then we're gonna bring down everything that we didn't work with. So the three and the plus. All right, next, our final step is we are going to add or subtract left to right. So we have three plus a negative four. All right, we're gonna take another pause so we can review the addition subtraction rules. The rules for multiplying integers is separate from the rules for adding and subtracting integers. When we add and subtract integers, if we have a negative involved, right here we do. Subtract your numbers and take the sign of the larger value. So if you notice that there's a negative involved, go ahead and subtract them. So four minus three is one, but then your answer has the sign of whichever number was larger. So is three larger or is four larger? Four is larger and four was negative, which means our answer is a negative one. Okay. And we're going to keep doing some more practice on that because in my opinion, those negatives are the trickiest part of this assignment. We'll do two more examples, okay? Ooh, this is a good one. I see lots of negatives, which means it's great for that practice. All right, let's start off by rewriting our problem. So two minus four plus negative three. Let's work our way through the steps. Do I have any parentheses? Nope, no parentheses, no grouping symbols. How about exponents? Nope, still haven't come in contact with any of those. All right, multiplication or division? No, I don't have any. Hmm. Okay. How about addition or subtraction? Yep, I got that. Now remember, do we add and then subtract, or do we do the addition and subtraction left to right? Left to right. So we need to work on our addition and subtraction from left to right, which means we're going to start at the left, work our way to the right. All right, negative two minus four. On that last example, we talked about what to do if one of your numbers had a negative sign. But what do we do here when they both have one? Because we have a negative two and a minus four. 
and minus is just another way of saying negative. All right, so they really have the same meaning. Well, when they both have the same sign, you add them and keep the sign. We have a negative here and a subtraction, AKA a negative there. So we add them and keep the sign. Two plus four is six, and they were both negative, which means it stays negative. Let's bring down anything we didn't work with. All right. How about this same deal here? Yeah, it is. Both of our numbers have a negative sign. So if they have the same sign, you add them and keep the sign. Six plus three is nine, and they were both negative, which means it stays negative. All right, let's say going over these rules doesn't really work for you. Maybe you need a visual. Well, guess what? You can make yourself a visual super quick, and that is using a number line. Now, we don't have to make a super extra extravagant huge number line. We can just make the number line fit with what we have. So if we go up to the very beginning, let's resolve this using the number line. So negative two minus four. Well, that tells me I'm gonna need to make a number line that involves a negative two negative one, zero, and oh, I might have to make it a little bigger. Didn't mean to get rid of that. One, two, three, four. And then let's go ahead and make it go Three, negative four, negative five, and negative six. Yikes, that's a little sloppy. Yeah, that's a little sloppy, that's okay. All right, well, we start at negative two. So negative two is where we begin and we subtract four. Well, if we subtract, that means we are going backwards. So one, two, three, four, which lands us at negative six. And then you could continue to do the same. If I had more computer screen, I would extend it and you would then go at negative six. And if you add negative three, you're going to the left. So you would count to negative seven, negative eight, and then you would land at negative nine. So even though this example didn't quite work since I didn't have enough room, you can draw a number line if that helps you with getting the negative and positives correct. All right, we will do one final example after we verify it's correct. All right, here we go. Finally, something with parentheses, which means I kind of already gave that away. We have parentheses, don't we? All right, one negative four divided by in parentheses. So the quantity of is how you would pronounce that. 1 plus 6 divided by negative 2. Very, very first thing we need to do is look and see if we have parentheses, and I do. That means we need to work and evaluate, so actually simplify the parentheses at the very beginning. So this right here in parentheses is what we need to focus on. Now within the parentheses, we still follow order of operations. 
So it's not that I'm forgetting the negative four and divided by out front. It's just that's got to wait until my parentheses are completely simplified. Within the parentheses, do I have any exponents? Nope, no exponents, so that step gets skipped. How about multiplication or division? Yep, I sure do. Right here, six divided by negative two. Now remember, when we are multiplying and dividing, when we have positive and negative integers, if they have the same signs, your answer is positive. Different signs, the answer is negative. So that's a little bit more straightforward than adding or subtracting. So six divided by negative two, since they have opposite signs, six is positive, two is negative, our answer will be negative. Six divided by negative two is negative three. I'm going to bring everything else down. And keep going. So I am going to put a little check mark here, but I'll probably have to come back and revisit it. Still working within those parentheses because it's not simplified to a single number yet. No more multiplication or division, but we do have some addition or subtraction. Right, with addition or subtraction, Remember, when the signs are the same, you add them and keep the sign. When your signs are different, you subtract them and take the sign of the larger number. So in this case, we have different signs. So we have a positive one and a negative three. We're gonna subtract our numbers. Three minus one is two. And then our answer has the sign of the larger number. Is one larger or is three larger? Three is larger and three is negative. Therefore, our answer is negative two. All right, and at this point, we only have a single number. So do I need the parentheses? Nope, I can just drop them. But now that my parentheses are done, we need to cycle back through, go back to right below the parentheses, go back to exponents and cycle way, our way through. It may be obvious on this example, but I still wanna do this one with all the steps to make sure we're clear. Are there any exponents? Nope, no exponents. That one gets a double check. How about multiplication or division? Yeah, we do have that. We need to multiply or divide from left to right, but in this case, there's only one step. <laughs> so negative four divided by negative two. Remember with multiplication and division, when the signs are the same, your answer is positive. When they're different, your answer is negative. So they're both the same. We have a negative four and a negative two. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. Negative four divided by negative two is a positive two. And we have nothing left, so we're done, but let's make sure we're correct. We are, awesome. All right, everyone, thank you so much. And please remember that if you have any questions, just to send an email to your teacher or attend a help session, we will be happy to assist. Have a great day, bye.